All right, welcome. This is our third session of EFT tapping for COVID-19. Peace of mind amidst uncertainty. And this is Andrea Crisp and then my colleague, Chris. And we're really excited to have you joining us again. Um, this is our, our third session and we are planning to do this all the way through May and we may do it beyond that. We'll just see um, what, what comes about with this pandemic that we're all finding ourselves in. Um, so thanks for, um, joining so us. for joining us. We're recording the session, but only the first half of the session. Um, <clears throat> when we take a volunteer in the second half, we're gonna stop the recording for that just for privacy concerns, but we'll be sharing these recordings and we'll provide the information um, towards the end and in, in the chat. So there is, if you're new to Zoom, there is a chat, um, feature so you can answer, um, ask and answer questions in there and we'll share some links through there as well. Um, but for the most part during this call, it's gonna be Chris and I um, on video and everybody else will be um, muted and videos off until we ask for a volunteer for the second part. So let's see. All right, we're gonna jump right in and I'm gonna lead us in just um, a little bit of a grounding exercise before we get into kind of the meat of what we're doing today. And this is um, what Chris led us in last time. It's called Orienting EFT. And this is just a, a great way to help um, get you into the room. And you're just gonna be doing some tapping while you're also focusing on your senses um, to help you feel present. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start tapping on the side of the hand and if you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes for a moment and just feel the chair supporting you. If your feet are on the floor, you can feel the support of your feet on the floor, knowing that the earth is holding you and supporting you. You're gonna open your eyes, look around your room, see if you can find something that's brightly colored. Look at that and focus on that for just a moment. I have a, a purple ostrich feather that I'm looking at. And go ahead and take a nice deep breath. And just feel what that feels like to have the rise and the fall of your belly and your abdomen and your diaphragm expanding as you inhale. Hmm. And then take a moment to listen. Do you have any background noise? Maybe there's some sounds outside. Um, maybe there's sounds in other parts of the house or the apartment that you're in that you can hear. Just calling some attention to that. Hmm. Did I miss senses? Oh, we didn't talk about smell. I have a diffuser running in my room, so I actually have a smell. I'm not sure if everyone else will have something to smell, but go ahead and take a sniff. Maybe you can smell dinner cooking. Maybe you can smell the fragrance of flowers or your soap. Any, any little hints of smell that you might have. Hmm. All right. So that's orienting, tapping, and basically you're just calling attention to your five senses. Um, so anything you can feel, see, smell, um, those types of things while you're tapping. And that's just a, a great way that you can help bring yourself into the present moment um, and can just calm you down. And I actually didn't go through all the, all the points, but we should have been doing that <laughs> as well and can be doing that. Um, all right. So, oh, yeah. thank you, Andrea. So, um, yeah, and, and even though we didn't move around with the tapping, it's like sometimes – I'll be driving my car and if I'm anxious about where I'm going or whatever, I'll just, just tap on my collarbone, just 
for a while. And that's kind of soothing and calming to me too. So lots of ways you can uh, use this kind of thing in your everyday circumstances or your life. So I'm Chris Mandeville and uh, I live in Southeast Portland, not too far from Andrea. Um, I have a house there and I live with my husband and my little, well, his, it was his little bulldog. Now it's our little bulldog, D. And let's see what else. So I took a, a new job starting this week with the, the state unemployment office. I'm sorry, the state employment office, not unemployment office. And so I'm in training uh, down in Salem, Oregon, which is about an hour away from where I live um, all this week. <clears throat> they're trying to gear up to provide uh, service to all the claims they're getting. As you can imagine, like every state in the country, they're getting lots of claims right now. Yeah. So the intentions for this uh, session, um, once again, we just we want to um, you know leave you in a better place. We hope that um, if you're struggling with things uh, regarding the the pandemic, um, feelings, negative feelings that we're gonna we're gonna help you with those today, either by working directly with you or by doing some group tapping and the borrowed benefits we've talked about before. I think all. Andrea, has everyone been on our calls before? Um, we, we we have some people who are new to the calls. I don't know that they're necessarily new to EFT, but it could be. So, okay. so. Uh, well, let me just ask the people, and then um, <clears throat> we uh, if you're not familiar with Zoom, there's a chat button at the bottom, uh, just a little bit right of center. Um, you can click on that, and it'll open up a little window next to uh, the screen. So you feel free to use that if you have any questions at any point during this or you have comment you want to make. But um, if you're new to EFT, uh, please uh, please uh, write new to EFT in the, in the chat window and we can um, just be aware of that. So um, the other intention we have is basically getting you to use this tool um, or helping you support you uh, supporting you using this tool uh, regularly it's it's really a great tool I personally don't use it as much as I as I um, could and it you know like many things it's a matter of just getting the habit making it part of your your routine um, and we're gonna talk about that some more in a little bit but we want to support you all in using EFT and and giving you some more awareness about it giving you some more tips about it and uh, more practice with it. Yeah, because it's really, it's really such a fabulous tool. And I have to echo what, what, what Chris said. One of my goals when I got the EFT training to become certified, um, when I first took my first in-person workshop back in 2011, was I wanted to start using it even more than I already was. Um, and so I do use it more than I did um, when I, before I took my first training. But there's still so many other ways I could be using it even more than what I do already um, because it's really once you learn it, it's that simple. And that's one of the reasons I love it so much because it's such a great self-empowerment tool. You get a lot of bang for your buck when you work with a practitioner, but you can also use it on your own um, and get a lot done that way as well. As well. So just like to share that with everybody. Okay. Thank you, Wilderness. Thanks for commenting on that. And like I said, feel free to ask questions as we go. Um, overview of our session. Uh, this is the introduction. We're going to do a little bit of group tapping after that. I'm going to leave that and talk about some, some tips for using EFT. Then we're going to kind of wrap that section up and answer questions. You can ask, ask questions at any point, but we'll have a special, um, we'll, we'll also especially ask for questions um, after the group tapping. And then we're going to stop the recording and Andrea is going to, um, uh, take a volunteer and work with someone directly. We're all going to tap along. So some of the ground rules, um, as, as you may know already, um, we're going to keep everyone muted with their video turned off. Just Andrea and I are going to be have our video and our, our sound turned on, but feel free to use the chat fe feature for any communication you want to do. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, one thing we also want, want to make clear is that we're using uh, clinical EFT. So we were, Andrea and I are both certified by an organization called uh, EFT International. And um, they do, uh, they teach clinical EFT, which is EFT is used in the in the scientific studies that have been done. And it's, it's maybe a little different than some of the EFT that you have used or seen elsewhere. 
And we're not saying any whatever is working for you. If it works for you, that's great. This is just what we've been trained in and, and what we've been taught as um, is the most effective. Uh, and it's used in studies. So that's what we can say, okay, this has been used in a study and, and it has been, uh, there have been results that have gotten, people have gotten from this version of EFT. So we want to make that clear. We're using clinical EFT. Yeah. And that's based on the original EFT is, um, as was created from the founder, Greg. <clears throat> and there's been a lot of other things that have kind of spun off of it. So that's why we just wanted to point that out because there's been a little bit of confusion um, just on the interwebs <laughs> on the internet because there's a lot of things that have come out of the original emotional freedom techniques. So, yeah. All right. So, um, New to EFT, we already asked that question. Um, one of the things that we like to remind people is to always have some water or at least a non-caffeinated beverage. Water is the best thing, but anytime you're doing any kind of energy work, being hydrated is really important. So um, you'll see me sipping on my water throughout because especially when you're talking, uh, <laughs> you can get a little bit more dry mouth, but it's just really important just when you're tapping in general. Um, to try and stay hydrated. So I always ask clients to have water at the ready. And we have both cleaned and washed our hands, but we are going to show alternative tapping points. So if you are familiar with EFT, but you're concerned about touching your face and you don't want to use that points, um, Chris will be doing the traditional points and I will be um, doing non-face points. And so you can follow along with either of us as we go through the session. Um, the other thing I want to point out is if at any time you start to get flooded with emotion and you start to become overcome, maybe um, you're feeling tears well up or things like that, just keep tapping. So in uh, traditional clinical EFT that we're doing, the setup statement, we call attention to whatever the negative emotion is that we're feeling. And the purpose of that verbal statement is to bring up that negative emotion in the body. But if you already have tears, you don't need to do that. You just need to tap because that emotion is already, you know, very present and up in your energy system. So just keep tapping if you find yourself um, feeling overwhelmed. And if you can't tap through the whole sequence, that's okay. Pick your favorite point and, and just tap that. Um, so that's one of the things we just want to point out since we're not with you there physically. Um, if you get overwhelmed, the best thing you could do is just keep tapping, keep tapping. Yeah, and so uh, we want to also mention that due to the um, COVID-19, uh, some people <clears throat> may want to avoid tapping on your face if your hands aren't clean. So if your hands are, haven't washed your hands um, recently and they need to be washed, feel free to go ahead and wash them. Otherwise, um, I'm going to do the regular tapping points, and Andrea is going to demonstrate the COVID-19 tapping points or the, the, the points basically that avoid your, touching your face. <clears throat> so um, feel free to follow along with either one of us, whichever you want to use. So um, I'd like to start this section. I'd like to talk about um, making EFT a habit, and then also we'll do a, some group tapping. So as I'm talking, feel free to uh, type in the chat window um, future things that you have worries about that are related to the pandemic. So just go ahead and share those with me, and uh, we'll go ahead and use those in a tapping. In the meantime, I want to talk about, <clears throat> like I said, making it more of a habit in our lives. So the biggest make mistake with EFT <clears throat> is not using it. So you have this tool, and um, you're not making use of it to help you live a more freer life, live a more peaceful life, um, uh, process your emotions in a healthy way. Um, making it part of your routine. So, and it doesn't have to be perfect. That's one thing that uh, <clears throat> I like to remind myself is I don't have to have it perfectly. I don't have to um, have it all figured out and, and do it perfectly. You just start tapping. Sometimes if I'm upset, you know, you just start tapping. However, whatever feels right, you know. So, <clears throat> um, I wondered also if anyone has... Uh, been successful in in making EFT part of their daily routine or part of their daily lives and if so if you could type in the chat window like when when do you do it like do you do it in the morning do you do it before bed 
are there certain times of the day that you do it or certain things happen and you do it automatically? I'm just kind of curious to see if anybody is, um, is making EFT really a regular part of their life. And for me personally, um, the only time I've been really regular with it is like before bed. And even then I don't do it every single night, but a lot of times I'll do it before night and before bed. And it'll be something as simple as like, even though I'm disappointed that I didn't get everything done that I hoped to get done today, um, my to-do list is, there's still a lot of stuff on it. Uh, still, I deeply and completely accept myself. And just go through, you know, a round of that, you know. And it's, it's really remarkable how it kind of calms me down. Because a lot of times I end the day thinking, gosh, I didn't get that done. I didn't get this done or that done. And it just feels like, um, it adds to my anxiety or whatever. Uh, likewise, you could do it in the morning, the first thing in the morning, you know, even though I have all the stuff to do, even though I'm feeling anxious, I have all the stuff to do today, or you may have a particular thing that you're anxious about that day. Um, <clears throat> so other times I use tapping. Um, okay, not getting any comments. So I, I can share um, some of yeah, the ways maybe. I use it that, at Please. least one of them will probably be different. So I um, do it in the car a lot. And of course, I'm not in the car as much as I used to be. As I'm, I don't have a daily commute per se, but um, I have done a lot of tapping in traffic. <laughs> um, or just in the car on my way to something that I might be anxious about. Um, and I also teach laughter yoga and I... Um, mix in some tapping in to the beginning of my laughter classes often and obviously I'm not doing the setup statement and like that kind of specific stuff but we we do just some uh, tapping points in the beginning it, it really helps people become present and in the room um, before we, we start what we're doing and so those are just some other some other ways that um, I've, I've used it yeah exactly um, so I'm not seeing anyone typing yet. If anyone has anything that they're, you know, that you have a worry about for the future, what's going to happen in the future here with, uh, the pandemic, um, like one might be like, are, are people going to get their jobs back or, um, what's the economy going to be like after this is over or, you know, what's it going to be like, um, you know, a, as we go on through the year. So feel free to type those things if you have them, if not, we'll make them up. Um, the other yeah, thing I'm I've, got, I've got plenty if you need them. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Me too. Uh, and I mentioned before, it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, just do the best you can and just, uh, it's better to, it's better to tap and not be perfect than not to tap at all for sure. Uh, the other thing I want to mention, um, while it's, while it's really great to start off generic, like, uh, might be, um, oh, I wake up in the morning. I just feel anxious. And even though I feel anxious, I don't even know why. Uh, still I deeply and completely accept myself. So that's what we call a, a global um, tapping. And what we want to do is go from global to specific. So um, while I'm tapping on that global round, I might notice that I'm anxious about, um, oh, well, in this case, you know, starting this new job. I definitely, when I was going to my first day of job, I was definitely anxious about it. I definitely tapped on it. Like, so even though I'm anxious about starting this job, and you can get even more specific than that. Like, uh, for me, it was like, um, even, uh, even though I'm anxious about starting this job and particularly, um, you know, what, uh, what we're going to be doing that day or, you know, will I, will I do okay? You know, things like that. So be as specific as you can. Um, and as you, you'll find, as you tap, you'll, you'll think of other things that come up, like, What's the actual What's the actual thing that I'm really, um, really anxious about? You know, um, maybe they'll call call my name or something, and I won't know what to say, or who knows what it is. And then the final um, little tip is um, you want to address all aspects of a situation. So um, let's say I'm driving on the highway, and a car, a guy's driving by, and he flips me off. Uh, I may feel. I want, to, I want to tap on all the emotions I have around that. So I may be angry. I might feel embarrassed. Like, why did he do that to me? What's wrong with me? 
um, I, I have maybe have several emotions around that. And as you, you start tapping with the one that's the right in front, the, the strongest and just work your way down to the different emotions that you might have about a particular event. And you might find the emotions change as you tap. So, and it can go get more intense or less intense. So and anything this, else you add, Andrea? Uh, what I was going to say is, and this is why when I'm tapping on my own, like when I'm with clients, I'm taking notes um, because I want to be able to keep track so we can make sure this is where we started and this is where we end. And did we actually get all the things that came up? Um, so it makes it easier to keep track. Um, but same for when you're doing it on your own, because you may have this thing come up and then another thing comes up and it can, what we call daisy chain. So you go from one to the next and then you don't really remember, like, I don't even know what first started this because now I'm onto something different. And so just jotting down little reminders, um, as you're, as you're working with yourself can be really helpful so that you can kind of keep, keep track of all of that. Um, but I wanted to go back to what you were saying about the global tapping round. And if you don't know what to say, just tap like, and this was one of the things that like a, quite a few people commented on in our, our first call is sometimes something just isn't right and you don't know what it is and you can't put it into words and just doing that global tapping round can bring you present to what's actually going on and that then it's easier for you to find the words because what what I hear from a lot of clients when they're um, trying to get into the habit of using EFT on their own outside of sessions is they don't know what to say everybody's worried about their you know I'm gonna say it wrong or I, I don't you know the words don't come as well when it's just me versus when you're feeding me the words those kind of thing and um, yeah, just tap, <laughs> just, just doing that, uh, that first uh, round of the global tapping often will help you get more dialed into what's actually going on for you so that you are able to come up with the words and the specifics that you need. Yeah. And uh, thank you, uh, Myra and Willingness for sharing a couple of things. I'm going to focus on worry on this group tap because it's kind of a universal feeling that I'm sure people are feeling. I know I'm feeling. Andrea, uh, is there other things that you're particularly worried about in the future about this pandemic? Um, one of the one of the big worries I have just with like the big general like getting sick. Um, and what's interesting is I don't worry as much about myself, although I am worried about myself because I have had like chronic illness issues and. Um, chronic infection and, and things in the past, but my mother is turning 80 tomorrow. And so I, I'm very worried about her um, because she's in a, in a really high risk category. And so that's one of the big worries that I have. And another one is um, business, not just my own business, but my husband's business is being drastically affected. So finances is a big concern. Um, I could come up with quite a few more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. That's good. <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, let's tap together and uh, we're just going to do a group tapping. And normally we would just tap on each one of these worries individually, but just for the sake of uh, keeping this kind of short, I'm going to tap on every, all of it together, but it's all related to worry. So on the side of your hand, um, just follow along with me, please. Uh, even though I have all this worry and uh, Andrea might um, yeah. say the words. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was responding to a private message from someone. <laughs> oh, no worries, no worries. Even though I have all of this worry. When I think about this pandemic. When I think about this pandemic. I'm worried about getting sick. I'm worried about getting sick. Or my family getting sick. Or my family getting sick. Um, I'm worried that prices might rise. I'm worried that prices might rise. And I'm on, uh, and I'm on a limited income. And I'm on a limited income. Uh, let's see. I'm... Oh, okay. Uh, I'm worried that people will start um, abusing the earth again. I'm worried that people will start abusing the earth again. It's The earth is kind of getting a break here. The earth has been getting a break here but we might just go back to the same old behavior. But we might go back to the same old behavior. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, so I'm worried about my finances. I'm worried about my finances. Will I get my job back? 
Will I get my job back? Will I lose my job? Will I lose my job? Will, will I have job? money to pay for things? Will I have money to pay for things? <clears throat> so even though I have all these worries, even though I have all these worries, I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. And I also want to mention, um, feel free to add things to the affirmation that you like. We want to, you want to pick an affirmation like I deeply and completely accept myself. If it really works for you, if it resonates with you, you might pick um, something like uh, I, I accept how I'm feeling, you know, or I'm learning to accept myself or um, I'm willing to try to accept myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not there yet. Um, so that's another tip is to pick something that really works for you. Um, for me, I like to say a lot of times, uh, I, I totally accept myself and the way I'm feeling. So kind of validating my own feelings. So yeah, I use that one a lot. Yeah. So let's go around one more time. Um, at least. So even though I have all this worry, even though I have all this worry. And then the other thing we want to conclude sometimes is, um, the, the, the body sensation. So for me, it's like, uh, and I feel, and I have this, um, this uh, heavy weight in my belly. And for me, it's I have a tightness in my chest. Yeah. So you, say, you can say whatever is true for you. Um, <clears throat> so even though I have this uh, heavy weight in my belly and I'm uh, worried about the future. I'm worried about the future. There's so many things that um, are, there are so many things happening right now. There are so many things happening right now. And we've never been through this before. We've never been through this before. And I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. And that feels scary to me. It feels scary to me. And still, I deeply and completely accept myself. And still, I deeply and completely accept myself. And the way that I'm feeling. And the way that I'm feeling. One more round, or one more, just the third time, Andrea? Yeah. All right, so even though I'm feeling all this worry. Even though I'm feeling all this worry. Got this, I'm just gonna use another example. I got this tightness in my chest. I got this tightness in my chest. <clears throat> when I think about this pandemic. When I think about this pandemic. It's really scary. It's really scary. Don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm worried about my finances. I'm worried about my finances. I'm worried about my health. I'm worried about my health. <clears throat> and I just, I'm worried about what's going to happen next. I'm worried about what's going to happen next. And still, I deeply and completely accept myself. And still, I deeply and completely accept myself. Another thing I like to say sometimes is, I, um, after that, is uh, just the way I am. Just the way I am. And just the way I'm not. And just the way I'm not. And so we'll go around the body once. So top of the head. All this worry. All this worry. And as we go around the body points, we want to normally just say like the motion. Uh, you can go ahead and repeat the motion the whole time. If you want to mention the body sensation, you can. Um, or you can go back and forth, however you want to do it. But we want to keep it as simple as possible so that you so that you do it. So between the eyes, all this worry. All this worry. Yeah, and if you're tapping, if you're avoiding your face, just follow Andrea. On the side of the eye, this weight in my belly. This weight in my belly. Under the eye, <clears throat> all this worry. All this worry. This is the liver point, so it's right under the breast or the bottom of the rib cage. Under the nose, all this worry. All this worry. On the chin point, I'm feeling all this worry. Feeling all this worry. On the collarbone, and I've got this tightness in my chest. And I've got this tightness in my chest. <clears throat> and under the arm, all this worry. All this worry. These are wrist points. All this worry. So um, thank you. And um, I did, forgot to ask, but if you might notice, uh, check in to see if the intensity of your worry um, from when, before we started to, to now has gone up or down. And go ahead and type that into the chat session just to let us know um, if your worry level has gone up or down uh, from the tapping. Yeah. And, and Anybody notice any big changes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and sometimes it goes up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing with global tapping, which is what we were just doing, and we were doing it as a group, so not everything was specific to you, but um, possibly, but we weren't getting really specific about things. We were just saying, you know, this generic worry about my health or this generic worry about uh, my finances. Um, oftentimes things can spike when you're just doing global tapping because it is helping you get in touch with what's going on for you. So. Exactly. Because you we may have that. mentioned something you hadn't thought about before. Maybe you weren't worried about, you know, I don't know, the economy or something. And we mentioned it and then, Oh, you start thinking about that now. So, um, so that's the uh, look tapping. Feel free to um, ask your questions in the chat and uh, we can go on to the next session. Yeah. So we had a few people um, looks like had theirs go down just a little bit. Did anybody have a spike? Cause that's not uncommon. If you felt um, something even more than when we first started, um, once we actually started tapping. Okay. Thanks, Wilderness. Yeah, and the other thing I mentioned about that is that um, I feel like worry or um, some of those negative emotions are kind of like the water we swim in on a daily, daily basis. We have a lot of stress and worry in our lives. And it's not until we actually sit still and tap into it and start thinking about it that we actually get more present to it. Because if you ask me in a normal day, hey, are you worried about anything? I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'm, everyone's fine. I'm fine. Um, but then when I start thinking about it and sitting still and being with it is when I really notice that um, how much worry and fear I, I'm experiencing on a regular basis. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that, uh, that term that you use, that phrase, the water we swim in, because it's so true. <laughs> we often don't think about it just because we're in that state so frequently in our society where we're being constantly triggered um, in our fight or flight um, or freeze response and uh, just under so much stress on a constant basis. So, yeah. All right, so, um, so we've made a few changes. Um, and if anybody has any questions, you can um, type some questions in there. And I'm just going to go through a few announcements before we get ready to take a volunteer and turn off the recording. Because this is the first time we didn't require registration for the call. The previous two calls, we had people registering ahead of time. That gave us their email address so we could send follow-up once the video is online and any handouts or things um, that were mentioned in the call. We could provide that in the email. But we, we had quite a few people who were not able to get in um, to that call and zoom is quite overwhelmed. So I have a support ticket out there, but we haven't heard back. So we took away registration, but that means we don't necessarily have everybody's email addresses. So um, what we've done is created a Facebook group and the purpose of the group <coughs> is just to disseminate the videos and the information from these calls. And so um, I am going to share the link to the Facebook group um, <coughs> here in the chat. So if you're on Facebook and you want to join the Facebook group, you'll get um, the follow up. Um, and there'll be some, there's room there for discussion. We've asked in the group that uh, people don't put a volunteer on the spot unless a volunteer has stepped up and offered for people to um, talk about their um, their tapping uh, session in front of the group. Um, otherwise, we can answer lots of generic EFT questions or questions specific to you, but we want to honor people's privacy. Um, and so um, that's one of the things I wanted to point out. If you are not on Facebook or are like, oh, I don't want to be in another group, I'm in too many Facebook groups, the videos are going to be put on YouTube. So I've also put on my YouTube channel um, in the, the chat there as well. So you don't have to be um, on Facebook or um, in the Facebook group to, to get that. Basically, within 24 hours, the videos will be uploaded. And I've started a playlist of the videos from each week. And so there's um, a playlist uh, there with the, the two that we've already had. And then this one will be added to it. And that'll just keep going um, as long as we're offering this uh, during the pandemic. Um, I'm just looking at my notes to see if I've covered all of the, the, the big changes. Um, 
So if you're interested in working with either Chris or I, we both um, work with people individually. So I am looking at starting a group um, so that I can offer um, EFT tapping. Um, one, I love working with groups. There's a lot of power um, in uh, therapeutically and being in a group and, and really understanding that you're not alone in your struggle. And so I'm wanting to create a group that's specifically around um, struggles and issues that people have during the pandemic. Um, and then it's also a, a cheaper way to be able to um, get some more EFT specific to you and, and, and your personal struggles in a group, but not as expensive as if you're working um, with a practitioner one-on-one. -on -one. But uh, we both offer free consults and I'm offering a discount on my package uh, right now as well during the pandemic. So um, my website is andreacrisp.com. So that should be pretty easy to find. That's crisp, like apple crisp, C-R-I-S-P as in Paul. <laughs> um, and if Chris, if you want to speak to. Yeah, I just want to mention what that might look like. So yeah, I offer a free consultation and a free, uh, actually a free first session. Um, what that might look like is your, it doesn't have to be pandemic related, of course, but it could be like you have a goal, uh, some kind of life goal that you want, maybe maybe you're you you argue a lot with your spouse and you want to be have a more peaceful relationship maybe you uh want to exercise more or you want to eat better um those are the kind of goals that we work with we, we work with people who want to who want to achieve some kind of a uh, goal in your life um so it could be almost anything really um we obviously don't deal with uh medical diagnoses um, just uh, more, more, more or less uh, things you want to achieve in your life or things you want, maybe even things you want to eliminate from your life. Anything else about that, Andrea? Well, that sounds, okay. that sounds good. So, um, so we will be here um, again next week. We, we've had actually more people um, on the other calls, but I think we have less because we had to change the time. Um, so I expect we'll have a bigger groups uh, going forward once people get used to this new time because we just changed it at the beginning of the week. So we didn't have um, kind of that a week's um, notice for that. Um, so apologize to anyone watching the recording who missed missed out joining us at the new time, but we're going to be at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific um, every week on Wednesday, and it'll be the exact same Zoom link um, that you use today to get into the call. And um, and some of the 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 calls will have um, prearranged topics um, like what we're doing, but it'll pretty much be the same format. So it'll change a little bit, but we'll do some group tap in. Um, and then we will take a volunteer in the second half. So we're getting ready to take the volunteer, but I wanted to talk about just briefly borrowing benefits. And the idea behind borrowing benefits is that even though we're gonna take a volunteer and I'm going to be tapping with um, them one-on-one, -on -one, you can still get benefits for your own personal um, issue that you might be struggling with. So um, the idea is that um, you make note of what your current um, upset is and then we use what's called a suds scale which is from zero to ten zero being nothing at all and ten being um being the most in intense and worst for that particular emotion and you just make note of what the issue is um the emotion and your scale from zero to ten and then you put that aside and you just tap along and repeat the words that the volunteer is saying even if that's not your issue and uh most of the time people are still getting benefits. So when they come back and look at what they um, made note of in the beginning, after the tapping, they're like, oh my gosh, I feel better about my thing, even though I wasn't tapping on that, I was tapping on this other person's issue. And so that um, was coined as borrowing benefits by Gary Craig, the founder, and it's really fabulous. So one of the things that I have um, put together on my YouTube channel is a specific uh, playlist of borrowing benefits with full length EFT sessions with other people that you can just tap along. So you um, can just sit in front of it and watch this hour long um, session or however much of it you have time for um, and just tap along and borrow benefits in that way. So that's another thing that you can find at my uh, YouTube channel. So any questions before I, I stop the recording? We're moving on to taking a volunteer. Any last 
minute burning questions. Not that you can't ask a question at the end um, when we're done with the volunteer, but just wanted to see if there's anything else. And if not, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.